What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to an article. And today, this article came out by the NFL. You know, ESPN articles are kind of kind of pushing me down a little bit, but the NFL may have just saved us. The NFL may have just saved us with this article of ranking the NFL's worst the first candidates for 2020 Lions year. Yeah, that, that title is going to get me. You put Lions in the title, I might have to click. Even though I may not want to hear what you got to say, I might have to click. And when it's in this kind of situation, oh, snap, I might get a little bit of hype. I might get a little hype. So I did see this before on, I think it was a Detroit Lions article. And I was like, dude, I need to go check out the original. And yes, you guys are closer for this video. The angle is a lot closer. It will go back. It's just like this. That way I can react to it. I think it's a little bit easier when it's closer when I react to things sometimes. So we're just going to have it closer. Because when I put it back there and I react to stuff, you can see the, the, the stuff in the background. And then I can't really blur it out because... Okay, anyways, let's focus on the article, okay? Ranking the NFL's worst the first candidates, all right? I'm hyped. Now, I think there's going to be other teams on here because it's ranking, so they may show, like, uh, will they do all 30 teams? They may do, like, five or something. I'm not sure. But I'm expecting to see a Lions somewhere in here. I don't know if they're going to be number one, but I'm expecting to see the Detroit Lions. So I'm excited to see what they have to say. If you guys want a video where I talk about how the Lions can be the um, worst the first team, actually, there should be a little... It would it be up here? I think there's like a little annotation thing, a little, little, little like circle you can click on and it will show videos on the side. I'm going to put any annotations to my videos. Well, at least one of them. The Detroit Lions being the comeback team of the year. You can watch that one, how I think they'll be the comeback team of the year. You could also check out how I think the Lions are like the 49ers. Now, I don't know if I have that one in the video list, but, but if you guys want to look that up, I do have a video how I think the Detroit Lions could be the next San Francisco 49ers. So you can check out both those videos. But today we're reacting to this article. So uh, let's enjoy this and uh, let's just get right into it. I know my feelings. I think I know why they could be worse the first, you know, because of the whole third year thing. Because if you put 18 and 19 together, I see a lot of potential here with Matt Patricia. I think Matt Patricia can be really, really good for the Detroit Lions. I think he can take us over the top. Matthew Stafford, his best year possibly of his career last year with Daryl Bevel till he got hurt. I think that connection is... Is beautiful we have a lot of weapons if that running game can you know come together a little bit it doesn't have to be great it just has to be okay if it just becomes average if it became average our offense would be really really scary it was already scary last year it would be really scary if it became average and defensively again if we're average we're probably easily a playoff team so where's the first from 3-12-1, the third pick in the draft, to I'm not exactly sure they met first. I'm assuming they're winning the saying winning the division, which I don't think we've ever technically won the NFC North. We won the title back in 93, which I think was the NFC Central because the Buccaneers were in it. Or did the Buccaneers leave by then? I wasn't sure. I'm not sure. But anyways, let's react to this article. I'm talking too much. I'm hype. Let's go. Okay, Adam, Adam Shine. I like it. Adam. Okay, Adam's my favorite NFL reporter right now, if he puts this at number one. Are the Lions better or worse this season? Okay. Uh, right here. Here we go. What if, Oh, I see it's the Lions. Hold up. I want to read the top. I want to read the top. All right. Let me read the top before we get hyped. Okay. Parody. Is it? Yeah. Parody. Uh, what a beautiful word is the life lifeblood of this league. One of the main reasons why the NFL king in today's sport, American sports spectrum is the simple fact that every team has a chance. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I said. It's one game. You don't have to win a series. You got to win one game. It's only 16 games. It's going to be 17 games. Still not a lot. Once you get in. That's why you always want to get the playoffs. You always take a playoff berth, whether it's wild card, whatever it may be. You only need to win like three games and you're in the Super Bowl. And it only takes those games. I mean, you could just have a lucky game, right? Maybe the other team's really bad. Maybe you just match up perfectly and they can't adjust because it's not a seven game series. That's all you need. That's all you need to win a Super Bowl, right? You just need a few things. And that's why we've seen wildcard teams win a Super Bowl. That's what's great about the NFL. Kind of like March Madness, right? That's why you see so many upsets. That's why we saw 16 beat a one. Never thought we would see that. But if it was a seven game series, it probably would have never happened. However, because it only takes one game, they're able to get them one time. Catch them, catch them slipping. Catch them sleeping one time. And all of a sudden you beat that team. So let's read through this. With the competitive balance driven by the salary cap. Yup. And, and so, you know, that, I like that. It's a good point. Among other factors, uh, your squad enters every year with the opportunity to make the playoffs. Don't believe me? Consider this nugget. Oh, here we go. He's going to give us a nugget. I like chicken nugget. Wendy's? Wendy's or McDonald's chicken nugget? I mean, they're both good, right? I feel like they're different. I feel like the, the Wendy's one are like peppered. I, I don't know. Since divisional realignment in 2002. Okay, I see you. We've only, oh, say it was 2002 when they changed the division. All right. So yeah, it would have been the NFC Central. Uh, we've only experienced two seasons in which at least one team didn't go worse to first, 2014 and 2019. Wow. Wait, hold up. 2019? Wasn't that last year? Didn't the 49ers go worse to first? 
Okay, maybe they weren't last in their division. Maybe that's why. But they they were basically worse. Up. So that tells you pretty much every year they are. In 2014, <laughs> that's the year we were good. Um, it's a routine occurrence. Um, with the right management, coaching staff, and quarterback, they, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, as well as breaks here and there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Every bottom dweller can rise. The challenge is identifying which bottom dweller will rise. Yes, I love it. Okay, let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. We're, yep, we're coming in at number one. All right. I'm going to I'm going to go like this, but don't read ahead. OK, don't stay with me. The NFC North is the most flawed division in football. Thus, all four teams can win it. Oh, I like that. They're flawed because there's a lot of there's a lot of questions. I did a video on that, too. I I'm just saying, yes, even the Lions who haven't won a division title since 1993. Someone actually put that. I put it on my story. Lions have won a title since 91. I I don't feel like I I wasn't sure that was right. And he said no, it was 1993. So shout out to you that did that. If you're watching this video, shout out to you. Uh, when they were playing in the NFC Central. See, I knew that part. I knew that. Well, maybe he said that too. But I, I think I did know that part. And that was with the Buccaneers. So I knew that. Well, he might have said that too. I don't know. I still give Green Bay the edge over the rest of the field. But the Packers counterproductive and inexplicable, inexplicable, big words, offseason gives them a 10-win ceiling. Okay, I love it. Yeah, you know what? I feel like... You always have, everybody always has confidence, and it makes sense because I feel like they're, they're pretty solidly built, right? They won 13 games last year. It's hard not to say that they're not the favorite, but they just don't seem that great. They don't seem that scary, man. Their offseason just so dang average. It's like, really? Like, you didn't have anything that, that concerned me. Christian Kirksey, come on, man. All right, I mean, I guess. Uh, while Green Bay did play in the NFC title game just five months ago, I don't think the Pack are on the level of NFL adversaries in San Francisco, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Dallas, or Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, I don't I don't know about Tampa Bay, man. I'm not guessing them up, but I guess they do have Tom Brady. Okay, heck, right now the Cardinals, Seahawks, Falcons, and Rams look better too. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'll give you the Seahawks. The Cardinals, they're getting a lot of hype. The Falcons? And the Rams. All right, all right. I mean, the Falcons are, hey, the Falcons could be on this list now that I think about it. Um, but someone has to win the North. That is facts. Minnesota is trying to win while real tooling. And now Delvin Cook's apparently pondering a holdout. Look, that huge, that's a huge incident because I didn't think, you know, necessarily that'd be a thing. But all of a sudden, that pops off. That could be a big factor. They run the ball a lot. They run it a lot. I see the Vikings winning eight or nine games. The Bears have a great defense. The least inspiring quarterback room in the league. Smells like eight and eight. Okay, yeah, I'd say they're probably going to be 7, 9, 8, and 8, which leads me back to Detroit. I'm saying there's a chance. A real one. Yes! Who wrote this? Hold up. I know you're Adam. What's your last name? What's your last name? Adam Shine. Okay, shout out to you, Adam Shine. You're a legend for that. Oh, it's still go. Oh, okay, we got more to read about. I thought it was over. I'm sorry. Okay. Matthew Stafford is a star. It, did you just become my favorite NFL reporter just in one article? That's crazy. As he displayed in Daryl Bevel's offense last year. Tell him Stafford's 2019 campaign, of course, was limited to eight games by a back injury. But in that half season, he stacked up sparkling numbers. It's spark yeah, sparkling. 19 to 5 touchdown interception ratio. 312 passing yards a game. I said that stat, man. That's a legit stat. That's insane. 312. 106 pass ready. Now it's year two in Bevel's attack. No more learning curve. As I wrote last month, I could see the 32-year-old signal caller leading the league in passing yards. Get back to the good old days, man. I miss it. Especially with Detroit's receiving core. Exactly. Uh, which I love. Kenny Galladay broke out last season, snagging 11 touchdowns and a Pro Bowl bid. Marvin Jones is a perfect number two. Exactly. Danny Amendola is a strong number three in the slot. And I remain a big believer in TJ Hawkinson. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you should. Best, best tight end in that draft class. Uh, with better health and an NFL season under his belt, the 2019 first rounder can become a stud. I agree. Second year tight ends take off. If you don't believe me, go look up the numbers. Meanwhile, in 2020 NFL draft, GM Bob Quinn stole DeAndre Swift in the second round. He did. He did. I told y'all. Did I tell you? Did I tell you that? I said some people call it reaching. Bob Quinn calls it stealing. I said that, but maybe not in this case. That was that was a steal. That, yeah, he stole that. I, wait, did I? I think I jacked up that whole. Okay, just don't even listen to what I just said. That didn't make any sense. Or maybe it, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm I'm hyped because this stuff makes me excited. I love when we get when we get love like this, man. It just it's just like yes. It's like it's like you're you're fueling a fire that I try to generate. I'm trying to generate a fire over here. And when NFL starts pouring fuel on that fire, it's gonna blow up, man. It's gonna boom, man. I love it. Okay, let's keep reading this one. I expect him to be in the mix for offensive rookie of the year. I think that's a fair point as well. Uh, what else we got? Matt Patricia's defense is beefed up. Yeah, you know we whoa, man. We had our spinach. We had our we had our our eggs. I don't even know what else you eat. You, this, this egg yolk? I don't I don't know. You know how like fighters they just eat eggs? I, they just like oh that's gross. Have any of y'all done that? I would not do that, but whatever. Um 
Uh, Matt Patricia's defense is beefed up even after Slay's departure. I agree. I think they're better after Slay. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I will never believe Jeff Okuda was the third best player in this year's draft class, but I believe in him as a legit NFL corner. You know what? That's actually a very fair point to say that. That's a very fair point to say that because I really liked Cameron Dantzler as a solid number two, but I still felt like he was the best corner and he could be really good in the league. Danny Shelton, Jamie Collins, Desmond Trufant were strong veteran pickups addressing needs on all three levels. Yep, don't forget Deron Harmon. And check the schedule. Detroit can start 4-4. Four and four, And then they play Washington and Carolina be hosting Houston on Thanksgiving. Thus, the Lions could hit December sitting pretty at 7-4. and four. Could you imagine? I miss being good, y'all. I miss it. As I, as I audit, well, we have really never been that good. But a playoff team, I miss it. As I alluded to above, my unenthusiastic Packers endorsement, I'm not ready to pull the trigger on Detroit winning the NFC North title just yet, but it's very, very realistic, and you Lions and Knit fans need to start embracing it. Facts! Tell them! Oh my gosh, if you're a Lions and not embracing that, we should be believing. I don't know what you're doing. All right, let's go through the rest of this real quick. I don't really care. The Chargers. I think Chargers are a solid one. Chargers are solid. They're, they're, they're really weird. I think a team that should be on here, I think the Falcons have to be on here, right? They got to be on here. The Cardinals, yeah, everyone's binding that. The Falcons got to be on here. The Dolphins, okay. And the Redskins, the Panthers, six. Bengals, seven. Oh, the Falcons are a lot lower than I thought. After he, How are you going to guess up the Falcons? They were terrible last year, weren't they? Okay, anyways. Jaguars, that'd be interesting. Jaguars. Ah, I can't see with the Jaguars. Bengals. Hey, I like that one. I like that one. Because they, they're like the very bottom, man. They, they were they had the first pick. Carolina Panthers. Okay. Okay, I kind of like that too. That, yeah. Washington. I don't know about that one. I wouldn't buy into that one too much. But yes, man, we're number one. That's all that matters is that we're number one. So what do y'all think? Are y'all buying into the hype or no? I, I understand why you're not. Some people don't. But you know I'm going to bring you guys the hype. And when they, if, when NFL does, you got to tell, you got to tell NFL to stop doing this stuff. All right, ESPN is like lost my trust. They need to buy it back. But NFL, man, when they do this stuff, oh, you guys just know I'm coming with you with the enthusiasm, with the optimism. My op Let's not act like I try to say that word. Let's just end the video here. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. I'm hype. Thank you for watching. Will the Detroit Lions go from worst to first in 2020? And I'm out.